Hello. Well, today I want to talk about a film uh, that is 35 years old. Um, it's a, a very dark film, uh, like a blurring, like a psychological horror with film noir, but uh, at this point in time, you know, film noir is it really a thing, though there is, like, neo-noir, which is, like, I guess, post-film noir. Um, and that film is, of course, uh, Blue Velvet. Um, here's the original 25th anniversary Blu-ray edition, as well as the uh, Criterion Collection uh, edition of the film. Um, the Criterion uh, collection has basically everything that this has plus more, with the exception of uh, the original Siskel and Ebert uh, review of the film. That is not included on this. Um, uh, and you also can find th that review online. Uh, I'll just say it's quite interesting in that um, uh, e uh, Roger Ebert disliked uh, this film well. Gene Siskel enjoyed this film, um, and Roger Ebert seemed to uh, dislike many of uh, uh, David Lynch's films, um, and even he said in a review that he didn't really even know why he didn't like his movies. There were there were there was one he did like, and he just doesn't really get it. But with this one, it seemed like the violence that is in the film. Uh, that's why he didn't like. He wasn't fond of like the violence that took place in the movie. Like it just seemed to be violent with this, just for the sake of being violent. And um, yeah, uh, you know the film stars Kyle MacLachlan, um, uh, Isabella Rossellini. Uh, um, she plays Dorothy. Uh, Kyle MacLachlan plays Jeffrey. Dennis Hopper is the villain as Frank, Frank Booth. Um, Laura Dern is uh, uh, Sandy, uh, uh, who's the daughter of Detective Williams. Um, and, uh, you know, the, throughout the film, there's like this mystery going on in this overall town that seems to be quite, you know, quite peaceful, yet on a certain part of town, there's a, you know, particularly like, you know, Lincoln Street, you know, that's, that's not a, it's not a good place to be, uh, and, uh, you know, David Lynch, uh, even said that, how he, uh, you know, with, uh, the film, you know, the villain is Frank Booth, and essentially he, uh, killed Lincoln Street, uh, um, essentially it's like, you know, how, a town that seems to be very good in America, you know, a very quiet town for the most part, but then um, there's a dark side to it that most people don't know about. Either they, you know, just generally don't know, you know, because, you know, everyday life, you know, you know, they have certain things they have to do, you know, certain responsibilities, you know, go to work, you know, or go to school, um, and, uh, you know, it's just a town that's very small and, uh, doesn't really, uh, seem to be all that, uh, uh, have a lot of problems, but, uh, you know, there's problems with, uh, drugs and, uh, uh, other crimes going on. Uh, Dorothy's husband and son have been kidnapped by, uh, uh, Frank, um, because Frank, you know, as he even said in the like various interviews that Dennis Hopper has done, uh, Frank loves Dorothy, uh, and he just has a very twisted way of showing his affection, you know. And uh, you see that quite a bit throughout the film, especially when uh, Frank, uh, you know, puts on a, I guess, mask and breathes in some sort of drug, which, uh, you know, uh, Dennis Hopper has said, you know, it was nitrous, o nitrous oxide, and 
something else like you know here's what it does and then because David Lynch originally intended it to be essentially like a, a helium and the only thing it would do was just make his voice uh, sound like Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, you know, something along the, that line, or those lines, and he thought, you know, how interesting would that have been to just play the character that way, but not deluded with drugs, and he was just, you know, inhaling, uh, you know, uh, helium, and just the only thing that would change is his voice uh, as he's, you know, uh, breathing it in, and then he's just completely in control and aware of what he's doing instead of going to some sort of other state of mind under the influence of drugs. Um, the character of Frank Booth is probably one of the most talked about uh, aspects of this movie, and, you know, for good reason. You know, he's the villain, a very memorable villain. He's seen, uh, I think at this point, as a, an incredibly iconic villain, um, uh, one that so many people have uh, talked about and, you know, this, this film helped uh, revive uh, uh, Dennis Hopper's career, because for a while he wasn't really doing too well, you know, this year, also in 1986, was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And he also uh, did a Hoosiers, Hoosiers with, um, you know, uh, the, the basketball film with Gene Hackman. And he got nominated for an Academy Award for that film. Great film. Um, that's my, uh, that's actually my favorite sports film. Um, and it's been a while since I've actually seen it. Um, I should probably do that again sometime. But uh, uh, I think his performance in Blue Velvet... Uh, is better and he should have been nominated and I think even won the Academy Award for Blue Velvet. However, um, you know, at the time, you know, films like that, you know, in the 80s, they seemed to, for like awards, like Oscars, they wanted to kind of shift into more honoring and acknowledging more uh, positive films. More uplifting because you know the 70s was very very dark period in that you know what, what I mean by that is there's a lot of dark films that came out of or dark and gritty films like you know the Godfather films um, when flew of the cuckoo's nest was qu quite dark um, taxi driver um, network even to a degree The ver films that were dark or it had some sort of, I guess, possibly bleak nature, you know, the 1970s was a, a time that people, you know, revere and love, and for good reason, you know. You know there's also uh, Jaws, which is also quite dark. Uh, you know, it's a, it is a horror film. But, so coming off of the 70s, it seemed like they wanted to sort of shift gears and not acknowledge too many uh, darker films compared to the, you know, the 70s. And so as a result, uh, performance like uh, Hopper's in Blue Velvet was overlooked. Um, his performance, his supporting performance in Hoosiers, which was more, a bit more uplifting. He's a drunk who, in that film, who, you know, has to sober up to help coach basketball team, you know, so there's an uplifting aspect to that film, whereas in this film, he's quite despicable, he's, there's pretty much no redeeming qualities about him, I guess one could say, you know, there's, you know, he, he's in love, you know, he loves Dorothy, you know, which, okay, that's all nice, but the way he shows it and how he essentially Well, there's no better way to say it. he essentially, you know, he rapes her, forces her to do things for him. Uh, he beats her, tells her not to look at him, and if, he, if she does, you know, he, you know, he hits her. Um, very abusive towards her, uh, 
kidnaps her son and her uh, husband, cuts off the ear of her husband, which uh, is how all this starts. You know, uh, Jeffrey, you know, kind of Gawkland's character, uh, comes home because his father has a stroke, and he comes back to uh, and helps out around the home and help run the business that his uh, father uh, owns and runs. Uh, and, you know, as he's just walking along the little trail, he's throwing rocks and happens, stumbles upon this uh, ear, and which uh, unravels this mystery, essentially. And it's a film that if you haven't seen, it's like it's just... I don't know. I've done what I can to essentially <laughs> say all I can to explain it if you haven't seen it. But if you have seen it, you under I think you understand. It's like, you know, if you haven't seen the film, perhaps words don't completely uh, really do it justice. You, it's one of these films you have to see. Though they say, you know, there's some people who are like, you know, don't. This isn't like a date movie. This isn't something you should watch with your uh, girlfriend or wife or whoever, unless they're into, you know, dark films, which if they are, then sure, uh, it can be qu it could be quite disturbing to uh, some who have never seen the film and aren't particularly interested in dark films or any of that, uh, anything like that. Uh, yeah, if one isn't fond of dark films, this might not be the movie for them. Um, also, it's David Lynch, and David Lynch has a very particular uh, style when he makes films. Um, I think so many people know that. Uh, you know, he he's very particular, and he's, he has a a, a very uh, certain particular style. He just, just when you see a David Lynch film, you know it's essentially a David Lynch film. Though, you know, I think a film like uh, Elephant Man is quite straightforward and not necessarily like a David Lynch film would be. Uh, which, uh, and that was his second film. First film was Eraserhead. Third film was Dune, and Dune didn't do well. It was seen as a failure. But as time went on, it, it's a cult. It's considered a cult film. Um, and uh, and this film sort of came about from the failure of Dune. Like you know, it's like he said that you know with Dune, he, that was sort of like a a low point for him at that time. You know, it was a you know he wasn't very familiar with the books, uh, and as a result, he made a movie. He didn't completely understand or. I guess appreciate uh, in terms of the material uh, completely at least and from that he made a film that at the end of the day wasn't totally something he I guess was truly in love with um, but Blue Velvet he made and it was a it's dark film uh, which he makes he's made many dark films um, you know The performances by McLaughlin, Rosalini, Opera, as I've stated, Dern, and, and Brad Dorff is in this. He's one of uh, uh, Dennis Hopper's friends, plays Raymond. Uh, Dean Stockwell is in, a, in it as uh, Ben, who they see, and he uh, lip syncs uh, In Dreams by Roy Orbison. Um, which Dennis Hopper keeps referring to "candy color clown" because of the lyric in the song, uh, and uh, it, this is a this is a quite a trip, uh, to say the least. Uh, the, the, you know, people have said this is like a fever dream. Uh, I think I might take that a uh, take that in a different direction and say it's a fever nightmare, um, because you know what happens is quite 
in a lot of ways surreal and just like, what am I watching? Uh, I remember having that thought when I first saw it, and but I also was very invested in enjoying what I was seeing. But at the same time, was like, man, what am I watching? This is quite, you know, quite dark and uh, I guess possibly bizarre. But uh, it's David Lynch, and there's it, with his particular style and his films, it kind of makes it kind of it just works, makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy this film. This isn't for everybody, though. Um, as as said, it's a dark film, and if one isn't interested in dark films, like like a thriller, s film noir type film like psychological horror kind of movie uh, it isn't it's psychological horror in that you know like it would be Frank and stuff he does and it's sort of like the tone of the dark tone is really essentially because of Frank and uh, what he has done and yeah Frank is just a character who is like you like love to hate He's just that character kind of character and, um Dennis Hopper truly is a, it gives a phenomenal performance. Um, I think the film, aside from Dennis Hopper getting an Oscar nomination, I think he should have even won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for Blue Velvet. Um, but I also think that uh, David Lynch's screenplay should have been nominated. Um, he got nominated for Best Director. I would say best picture because I do enjoy this movie quite a bit, but um, because of you know the, what they kind of wanted to do uh, in the '80s, it seemed like it might not have gotten a best picture nomination. Though Platoon won best picture that year, and that's uh, it's a fairly dark film. Though though Platoon is a war film, so in a way that's ex sort of like expected. You know, war films getting dark. Uh, isn't a big surprise, um, but uh, this film, I think, is truly extraordinary. Um, Isabella uh, Rosalini, uh, her career really, like essentially, I guess, started with this film. Um, Kyle MacLachlan's career kept going, um, and uh, the composer. The, Angelo Badalamonte. I might have, I probably butchered that up, but uh, it's the first time uh, he and Lynch have ever uh, worked together. Uh, and they've worked together on many of his many projects after Blue Velvet. Um, and uh, the Mysteries of Love is a song that's in the film, uh, written by David Lynch and. And uh, he got the words on a piece of paper that David Lynch wrote and tried to come up, come up with a way to make it into a song because he just wrote a bunch of words. He's like, there's nothing really there. <laughs> and that was quite interesting of how, hearing how he constructed all the words into something that could be a song. And then a friend of his came and sang it and it's in the film, and it's very memorable. Um, you know, Blue Velvet comes from, you know, the, obviously the song, and uh, Dorothy sings it throughout the, here and there in the film. Uh, she's quite good uh, in this role, as is Kyle MacLachlan. Everybody is incredible. Everybody who works on this, has worked on the film, does great work. Um, if this is a film that interests you, uh, like if you haven't seen it, uh, you know, but like the psychological, like thriller, uh, sort of kind of film is interested to, interests you, uh, you know, give it a watch. Um, you know, if you watch it once, uh, you know, hey, you've watched it, and there's even some critics that who have at one point gave negative reviews of this film 
uh, re-looked at the movie and sort of gave a different re uh, review you know, like, uh, later on, and they've proved it. Like one critic said that they walked out of the film not because it was bad, but because it was so good, and they just got to them because of how good it was and how effective it was at just unnerving them so much they had to leave the theater. Um, uh, I guess that's the mark making of a like a marking of a po powerful film, uh, and of course also with a uh, Pep's blue ribbon hat uh, wearing this because of you know blue velvet. That's uh, Frank's uh, beer of choice. Uh, he even uh, yells at Kyle McLaughlin for liking uh, you know Heineken. Uh, A very memorable moment, uh, I think. Of, uh, I think there's uh, various memorable moments of the film, but that's just one off the top of uh, this. Uh, but yeah, um, this is quite a film. I could keep going, but you know, uh, sometimes all you can do is just say, you know, you know watch the film. Uh, and if you enjoy the film, awesome. If you have seen the film, uh, what do you think of it? Do you enjoy it? Do you uh, dislike it? Um, why Why not? You can definitely uh, uh, write your thoughts in the comments if you'd like. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope you're all having a great day, uh, having a great weekend, great week. And I'll see you all next time.